Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're drinking bourbon. And we're back in the bar. This we is are, awesome. We are back in the bar. All right, Ben, what's on the bar today? Well, a couple of glasses, but no bottle. And the reason for that is we don't have this bottle. We yeah. will probably never have this bottle, but we were graciously gifted a sample. From a friend of the channel. From Greg Ahrens. This is William LaRue Weller, the 2022 version. So here, here are my thoughts before I even touch the glass. Yeah, because we've obviously never had this before. Never it's in my one. life. I, I did actually see a bottle once, but it was crazy expensive. Don't sure. ever anticipate seeing it again. However, I've had a lot of good bourbon. Mm -hmm. At actually fairly inexpensive prices. Yeah, sure. And, and part of my brain is going, how good can it be? Right. And then part of my brain thinks, well, once you have it, it's going to be good, no doubt. I would imagine it probably will be. I've heard good things about William and Lou Weller yeah. in general. Like yeah. a lot of people will say like, this is actually one that's worth hunting. Now, I don't know if it's worth paying secondary prices for. I don't think anything I, I, is. I, I would say the answer is absolutely no. Right. But, but let, well, let's find out. Let's okay. get into the nose here. Okay. Oh. Rich toffee, like it's it's yeah. mature, complex. There's a lot of things going on. A little bit of like bright spiciness though. Do you know what this has though? It's like the toffee is there. Mm -hmm. It's all those like desserty toffee caramel, but it's like buttery, oily. It, like it smells oily. It does. That makes yeah, any yeah, sense? I totally agree. Yeah. It smells thick. I don't know the age, but the age I think is not super. No, I like, think they're aged pretty well. And there there are stats on the website that I can look up and I'll, I'll put that on the, okay. the screen. But That'd I think helpful. these are well aged. But not like 20 years, like we think. Not like 20, but I don't know. In the like teens. teens or something like oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I could be wrong about that, but man, that's A little bit amazing. of the, like dark cherry kind of like influence coming through. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, like toffee and caramel with like cherry drizzle and like buttery, like some sort of like cornbread or some sort of like a, I don't know, pastry. That smells amazing cherry. after multiple snibs. Cherry let's, pop tart. Let's, let's get into this, cheers. So I, at this point I'd certainly like to reach out to Greg and say thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I mean this is, uh, Wow. It, it's, exa it's exactly what I thought. It's exceptional and it's not worth it at the same time. Not worth what? A, a crazy amount of money or a crazy like amount of Like thousands hunting. of dollars yeah. that people spend. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think there's a bourbon on the planet that's worth thousands and, of yeah, dollars. Yeah, exactly. But it's pretty amazing. This is, I, I mean, I'm gonna have to go in for another sip of this. Mm -hmm. I've had things that are, well, we've had like Rip Van Winkle 10 year, Weller 107, same mash bill as this. Yep. I've had Pappy 15. Okay. Um, the proof on this, I think it's written on here, 124.7. It's noticeable. It's definitely a high proofer in the hundred mid 120s. Yeah, like and so no those surprise. other ones are probably not aged to this level. The Pappy 15 is obviously 15 years, but it's not mm -hmm. 124 proof. This is, what I was gonna say is I've had some other stuff that is in the same mash bill down the same lane, yeah. but this has this just really brings something. It really has a nice extra. graham cracker note, and maybe mm. there's some some milk chocolate. Maybe that's the biscotty. I, I note was gonna I was say getting. the biscotti kind of note. I mean that we get on. Well, some I wasn't pr pronouncing biscotti biscotty. I was saying like biscuits, but biscotty. Oh, no, but you say no. biscotti, that makes sense too. Yeah, there's something sort of yeah, it's like- It's Italian for cookie. Yeah. <laughs> this is freaking amazing. It, it, it is a really, really good- This is and so good. Justified unicorn, I would I think. <laughs> Absolutely. But don't pay secondary prices. Can you imagine if just normal bourbon tasted like this? Like if you could just drink this every day? Well, then it wouldn't be special. That's I still think it would be. It would See, be the most amazing drink on the planet. You're one of those people who wishes Christmas was every day, and then it, it wouldn't be special. Yeah. It needs to be once a year or once every few years kind of thing. Okay, so speaking of special, um, 
I would say that this is, from a, a bourbon enthusiast slash collector mm -hmm. standpoint, and I'm assuming if you're watching this channel far enough into this video to hear this right now, you probably are a, an enthusiast slash collector. Or interested. Right. Um, this is an experience, I would say. Yes. This is not a normal bourbon, obviously. That's mm -hmm. what I was just saying. If everything tasted like this, it'd be amazing. So this is outside of the realm of what you're gonna get really anywhere else. And so if you're really a bourbon enthusiast, I would say I've been to a couple of different bars that have this. They charge you about 70 bucks for a one to one and a half ounce pour, maybe 80, mm -hmm. something like that. I would say that is worth it to As treat yourself the for the experience. I, yes. I kind of agree that yes, it's justified because of it is unique. Like it's real dense and the, the flavor really sticks around. Mm -hmm. um, and once you have it, you, you know, you have it. You don't need to scratch that itch again. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would love to, but this is up there in, I'm trying to think of a, a bourbon that I've had that's better than this, that it, I can it, just hands down say is better than this, and I can't come up with anything. I, so I do have a category of bourbons that we have quite a few in the range that are one step down and that's a very nice level to be on. That are in a category? What are we talking about here? Um, there's a, a, a category of bourbons that we were able to find a few times a year. Yo, you do not want to say it. We, we say it all the time because everybody knows. Well, I was going to, I mean, the Jack Daniels. Single barrel, barrel proof. Some of those definitely are in this range. I think some of the Elijah Craig's get close. Right. The Old Forester single barrel gets really, really close. Mm -hmm. So while this is great, there's a lot of other stuff that maybe it doesn't surpass it, but it's really close. Do you know what it is? Is there's something about this, and I had this experience with the, the old Rip Van Winkle when we did the proof points and we blinded it with a bunch of other stuff with the same proof point. Um, there's just, and I don't know if it's just, I love the, the weeded mash bill from Buffalo Trace. And I agree. And of course I, that's I where you too. get your unicorns, your pappies it, and yep, this and even the Wellers. But this just brings something that none of those other things it has it's like like you're saying they're 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 up in a, a very close tier yep because you do get to a certain point with bourbon where you know d despite the price or the unicorn status mm -hmm. like there are other ones that are close yes and i agree with that but this one just has something special you know what it reminds it me that of that really is different and it's like i said it's more of an experience so um, we have a single person who's always in our live streams and he's in a lot of other people's live streams as well. He's gonna get this one reference. There's a particular maker's mark with a particular stave profile. That's really? That's very close to this. It's, no, it's really? Not, not exactly. I'm getting a fair amount of chocolate on this. So I think right, that- Pause the camera, run, get that bottle. <laughs> I've only ever had that like once or twice out on the porch. Yeah. So maybe at some point we revisit the other half of the sample that we have it, against that, because I feel that this is similar-ish. It, it, certainly this, I think, would win in a blind flight, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it, a lot of similarities. This is a little bit of the milk chocolatey style. Mm. So it's really good. There's something about, <laughs> the oak is fantastic on it. Mm -hmm. But there's something about when you get a truly like premium bourbon experience, mm -hmm. it's the density of it, where there are some other great bourbons that still have like, they're, they're a little more thin than this. Sure. It's the density, it's the viscosity, it's the oiliness of it. And then it's when you have that as the base for like the carnival of like sweet, buttery, toffee, caramely, chocolatey flavors that this brings. It's just, yeah, this is, I, I can't keep describing this without getting creepy. So, well, <laughs> no, but here's, here's the, another approach to this. If this is considered by many to be the unicorn of unicorns. I mean, I think Pappy is the mostly, well, but, yeah. but this one, I, as, amongst bourbon channels, I've seen this more highly lauded. Yes, I would agree. I think this is considered like the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what the real thing that sells it is maybe more the experience. Mm -hmm. The individual flavors are great, but 
you know, a lot of other bourbons check off certain of the flavors. Right. It, there's just something it's about this. the whole thing, the whole package. It's the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's so perfectly well-rounded. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just, there's, this is a perfect bourbon. Yeah. Unfortunately. It, unfortunately. It's, it's a bummer, actually. I was hoping it sucked and then I could just put this to bed and, yeah. and not care about it. But honestly, God, I think at some point, you know, maybe you go up for your birthday or something. If they have this for 70 bucks, I may purchase a, even having had it once. For a truly like a special occasion I, thing. I could see that if we went to the a way, local bourbon store or bourbon yeah. restaurant. The way I look at it is, you know, we buy bottles, multiple bottles every month. We probably don't need to, but we do. You know, we're collectors right. and we do a channel. And, yep. and if you're a collector or, you know, you're just a bourbon enthusiast that buys multiple bottles, you're skipping one $70 bottle for one month. To, oh, to go out and spend oh, 70 bucks okay, I see on where you're an going experience, with this. Yeah. you know. And on a certain level, I would trade a good $70 bottle for just the one-time experience of this. Fair just enough. the one time. Fair enough. You yeah. know? So, all right. Well, obviously, we're fans of this. So if you can get a hold of this, definitely do it. Again, don't pay $2,000 for it unless you, you don't, you know, if, if $2,000 yeah, isn't to... a big deal to you, then well, you, no, you, you do you're, you. <laughs> all you're doing is making a boat payment for a... Right. scumbag liquor store owner that's yep. overcharging. Exactly. So don't do that. But. So, but yeah, if you if you get a chance, it's it's worth the uh, paying a little money at a bar for for the experience of this for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been the 2022 William Larue Weller on the Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Till next time. See you next time.